So we're here in Plymouth and here is Ben Medland, CEO and founder of Drift Energy. Hello Ben. Hey. Nice hey to meet you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank um, you for so, coming down. Yeah, no problem. These boats are amazing. Can you just show us around and tell us exactly how everything works? Absolutely. Why don't you come on down? Yeah. So these are our first energy yachts. Okay. And they're a world first in the sense that what we are doing is we're generating energy whilst foiling. Okay. So they're sort of flying through the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, Underneath the vessel here, we have effectively the heart of this, which is the turbine. Okay. So that deploys into the water and we sure. generate the energy from that. Okay. Yeah. Then that passes through into this unit here okay. where we store that energy, but then feed it into an electrolyzer. Okay. And in the electrolyzer, we split water. Okay, so you've got the, there's like a propeller underneath the boat, that, that then turns a turbine, which then creates the electricity, gets stored in there, then it goes into the electrolyzer to split the water, and that's how you make the green hydrogen. And we keep the hydrogen and let the oxygen out. So yeah, another way of saying it is that we go around the world creating green hydrogen, leaving nothing behind but oxygen. So the drift energy yachts really are a wonderful innovation in green technology but I'm keen to see them on the water and in action. And that's exactly where we're going to go next. After all, there's a big international marine event on in Plymouth this weekend, so there's no better place to see them tested. Although we spend the first few minutes ducking down and just trying to get out of the way of some of the bigger boats. Soon though, we see them rise up and out of the water and generating green hydrogen. It almost seems otherworldly watching these things fly along. Quite mesmerizing. Cool as these are, they're evidently just small demonstrators. So I wanted to ask Ben a little more about their future plans. What's the kind of like global relevance to this? Because obviously with these boats, they're incredibly impressive. Tom was involved in building them. You know, you guys have made this incredible effort, but that's not going to create the amount of green hydrogen that we need. So yes. what, what's the kind of, where, where next? Well, you're right. I mean, we're starting at this scale. Uh, this is what we call inshore class. Uh, so it's really to prove the technology in an area like this, um, and then to get the autonomy built into the boats as well. The next stage, which we're working on now, is what we call offshore class. So that'll be a boat capable of producing tons of hydrogen in a sitting, in a, in a trip, and deliver that back into a port such, such as Plymouth, for instance. Thinking ahead with where green hydrogen kind of fits into the renewable economy, there's certain industries, aren't there, that are kind of particularly well suited. Um, you know, long distance transport is one of them. Am I right in saying that shipping is one, and presumably these things would be ideal for shipping in one way or another? I mean, absolutely. One of the things that we can see when we go from, from this class, inshore to offshore, but then there's ocean class, which would be another step up in terms of capability. So it'd be tens of tons, if not hundreds of tons, thousands of tons of hydrogen. At that scale, bringing that into a port like Plymouth here, we could run container ships, cruise ships, support ships, fireboats, and start to really decarbonize what has been a very difficult to decarbonise industry, such as marine. Yeah. But that hydrogen could also go and be pumped in shore. Mm. Uh, so it could be taken onshore, and that could then be onwardly distributed into the gas grid. It could be distributed into the transport next, uh, sector, mm. so into the transport sector, but also uh, into, uh, in, into the kinds of heavy industries like aluminium, steel manufacturing, to, to help decarbonise those industries. So there looks like there's a lot of potential here, and the future boats are going to be these huge ocean-going vessels creating hydrogen at scale. Although to be fair, they probably won't look too much like this vintage-looking vessel anchored in Plymouth Harbour this weekend. However, for all the excitement, I'm still left with a couple of questions. The main one being, why bother with energy yachts to create green hydrogen when you can use wind farms and solar energy to make it instead? Well, the answer to this is that whilst at the demonstrator level, they're being captained by the ex-Olympic squad sailors we see here, in the next version, they're gonna be fully autonomous and self-sailing. 
So these boats will be able to intelligently cruise the world's oceans looking for the perfect wind conditions. This will allow them to be generating hydrogen 80% of the time, which is a lot more than stationary offshore wind farms that have to wait for the wind to come to them, so only generate about 39% of the time. The thing is though, as with renewable energy generally, it's not really about pitching one technology against another, but rather a mix of different innovations that will all add up and play their part in different ways. Drift kind of came about because I set myself that challenge that invent a renewable class that could be built straight away. It doesn't need to wait for land to be sold for um, you know, uh, auctions of offshore estates. Once we've got the designs right for these boats, we can make as many as we need to, as quickly as we need to, and start deploying them to generate green hydrogen to move us towards net zero quicker. Because Drift is about getting there faster. We're an AND company, we want to add and accelerate the energy transition. Long day in the end. All right, let's get this life jacket off. So there we have it, drift energy, generation, storage, and distribution of green hydrogen, all in one neat little solution. So looking back and reflecting, well, you know, for me, I think it's really shipping that's the big deal here. I think around sort of 80% of international trade is apparently carried on long distance, great big container ships that go around the world. Um, and they're very polluting, you know, they run on fossil fuels. And as you probably heard Ben say earlier, they're notoriously very difficult to decarbonize. Main reason for that is because they do such long journeys and there's various other technical things as well that means that, you know, electrification and batteries aren't particularly suitable for them. So, Green hydrogen, hopefully, is the answer. And what I love about Drift is the fact that, you know, it's generating the green hydrogen, it's going around the world, looking for the perfect winds, being as efficient as possible, and then it can go and deliver to these cargo ships, or of course, be taken uh, onto land and used in the transport network or wherever else. So, so yeah, not just that, it could be brilliant for green jobs around the UK, you know, coastal communities, if shipbuilding was a thing again, I mean, no one's ever thought that that was going to happen again, but if uh, this technology does scale and these hydrogen energy yachts become a thing, shipbuilding could become a thing in, in coastal Britain again. I mean, you know, who would have thought? So yeah, thanks very much for watching the, the video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.